Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to Newbrook Workshop. A long time ago I promised that I'd start making a few videos about motorhomes and it's taken a little while but we've just acquired one and so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it. Now this is the Hymer Exus T580 Pure and I'm going to start this video series by making a video about this particular vehicle. And the reason I'm doing that is because I haven't found a UK made video about the UK model, which this is, of the T580 Pure. So here we go. Now this motorhome came from the Irwin Hymer Centre in Stafford here in the UK. Now they have a really good stock of second hand vehicles and also a lovely showroom with some very splendid brand new models on show. Now I do have to tell you at this point, I have received no benefit no payment, no discount, no little gizmo freebies from anyone in the making of this video or the subsequent ones in the Motorhome series. I pay for this myself. Now the uh, base vehicle is a Fiat Ducato uh, 140 horsepower and I think it's just over 2.2, maybe it's 2.3 litre engine size. And this model comes standard with automatic transmission which is absolutely amazing and also is a lot of other standard features inside which I think are astonishing. And the Fiat itself works really well, we've driven it now about 500 miles. Uh, there is a possibility that uh, future iterations may have a Peugeot or even a Citroen uh, base vehicle but the Citroen, the Fiat and the Peugeot uh, vehicles like the Ducato are very very similar. Now maintenance is absolute doddle because the front end where the engine is is a standard Fiat Ducato van therefore your local Fiat Ducato dealer would be able to do anything on the engine and transmission with no problem whatsoever and that was different when we had a, an A-Class it was an absolute nightmare for the engineers to get in at various bits of the engine <laughs> it really was difficult. Now fuel economy is not too bad although we haven't been a huge distance yet and not quite fully loaded. However we're getting over 30 to the gallon of diesel and I think that's pretty good. One thing to remember about these Euro 6 e vehicles is that first of all you need to have add blue. There's a little tank to put this additive in which helps cut down emissions and also uh, that standard the Euro 6e allows you to go into the OLA zones, the low emission zones uh, which we have certainly in various places in the United Kingdom I'm sure abroad as well. Now this is a fantastic motorhome and the reason is that Hymer have put so many of the extras that people would normally find themselves having to buy after they've purchased. They put all those extras in right at the very beginning. Now there are a number of advantages in that, not only on price, these things are being factory fitted, it means they're going to be done at the right stage of the build uh, so that wires go in the right place so you don't have to have conduit knocking around the place to hide a wire, everything's built in. And I'll give you some ideas what you get. First of all you get the automatic transmission, you get the navigation system, hi-fi system and everything and it's a really really good bit of kit. You get the television, you get the satellite and the UK version has an oven and a grill uh, which I think is absolutely super. Now those few things if you added them together, I remember when we bought our one and only previous uh, motorhome uh, I think we spent nearly £9,000 on all of those extras and they were quite expensive. To get a really good satellite navigation system is not cheap these days and the one on here is absolutely fantastic. Now there's an automatic step here and that's operated with a little button there and it's retracted with the same little button and should you try and drive away with the step down a little alarm sounds and there's a button in front of the driver so that the step can be withdrawn again. And moving down the driver's side of the vehicle towards the rear we've got the electricity hookup point and I will be doing a separate video about the electrical side of things so we won't do any more about that now. And here we have the cover over the stopper for the water tank. The water tank holds 120 litres of fresh water and moving backwards there is a large garage door and inside the garage there's an enormous amount of space. I will bring you in a bit closer. This is the large door, on the other side there is a small 
uh, door and so if you're getting bicycles in this is the side you do it from. Talking about bicycles, now I hope you can see this clearly enough at this stage, uh, it's a little bit dark today. Uh, there are lights in here, I've switched them on but um, in this light it's very difficult to tell. However, uh, you can see I've already done a bit of work to put my bicycle racks in and I can hold my two e-bikes in here with absolutely no problem at all, really secure. And there's still then plenty of room for everything else. I'll talk more about the bike racks in another video. I'm not sure if you can quite make it out, but there is a little uh, access point there so you can undo the valve on the waste water tank. The waste water tank holds 90 litres of waste water. And basically that's the water that's come from uh, the sink and the wash basin and the shower from inside the vehicle. Now you might just be able to see just here, uh, there's a, an outlet. When you turn that uh, stopcock inside to get rid of the waste water, this is where the water comes out. And in my experience on most campsites, you can park the vehicle over the actual drain and uh, turn that and off it goes. But they do supply with the vehicle a little extension hose. It's about, um, I think, two meters long so that uh, you could extend this out two meters away from the vehicle. When you unlock these Heimer catches, the ones that look like this, uh, when you do the unlock motion, it will pop out. But whilst you've still got the key in there, if you turn it through 180 degrees, that's now in the locked position. And the reason that's useful is you can open this and open the door, do whatever you like, and then you shut it, turn it into the shut position, so that's now the catch is holding, and then just press, and that's it, locked. And we're on the far side, this is a smaller door, and uh, when we open it up, I've got the big door open on the other side. This is a smaller opening, but the useful thing is, is that when you've got kit in here, you can get at the bits and pieces at this end pretty easily. The only real difference is the big door has got a gas strut that holds it in the open position, uh, but this one has a little catch, you can probably just see it here, and there's a, a bit on the door which engages with it. So when you push it all the way there, it holds it pretty well uh, as it should be. And again, I've done my trick with this going in the lock position, turn that round and then push that shut. Now the only disadvantage of that method of doing this is that if you put your keys on the insides and you've got this thing, you just shut it and lock it, oops. So <laughs> be very careful. Have a spare key in your pocket perhaps. Now inside the gas compartment, there's provision for two 11 kilogram propane cylinders. One here where you see it and another one just here. And there's this Truma Duo C control setup here. It allows two gas cylinders to be connected, both turned on, and there's a big uh, dial in the middle which you switch round to alternate the delivery from one cylinder to the other. There's also an automatic crash protection system. Uh, should there be an accident, uh, this uh, little gadget comes into operation and it cuts off the gas supply from this area to the rest of the vehicle. So it's a little bit safer if you had an accident. Also uh, part of the system are these gas filters. Now I've not come across them before but apparently every time you change the cylinder you change a little tiny uh, filter disc which fits inside there and it helps to keep the whole system nice and clean and pure. And I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, but uh, in the floor on this side, there are a couple of cutouts and that leads through to uh, sort of fresh air through a mesh down below. So were there to be a gas leak, the gas being heavy in there, would go through those out to the outside world relatively safely. And here we have access to the uh, container which holds all the effluent from the downstairs loo. And uh, one would take this uh, to the dumping place when you're on a campsite. Now I will be making a video about how to get this when it's full of liquid uh, to the dumping place because it could be pretty heavy. Now this one has got wheels at the back which is pretty handy and this handle here extends outwards so it's just like one of those uh, suitcases that you see people walking around with at airports. However, uh, there are simpler ways and I'll show you that in due course. But anyway, when you finish with it, when you've emptied it, you push it back in and there it is. I'll be giving tips about this in later videos. And then the final little compartment on this side of the vehicle uh, is where uh, the leisure battery is and some control electronics, etc. There is space under here to have a second leisure battery. In our old 
uh, motorhome, we had two leisure batteries. Uh, we never had any problems with them in 12 years. And we're just going to see if we can manage with one with this vehicle. If you're living off grid for any length of time, you know, away from a campsite, then you will certainly need a second leisure battery to see you through the dark winter nights. Uh, just here is an outlet for the hot water heater. That's where it runs on gas and electricity with this vehicle, uh, but its uh, gas fumes exhaust is just there. And the vehicle comes as standard with a four meter awning. Uh, you use a little lever to wind it out and uh, it comes out to just over two meters, I believe. And in a later video, I'll probably show that in operation. Well, there are twin beds here, There's plenty of room climb up the short steps just below my feet and uh, we've already put the bedding on we've got electric blankets on and uh, you can see behind me I've made a little shelf it takes the clock radio underneath I've put some extra sockets so we've got sockets for the electric blankets and also for the clock radio and above you can see provided uh, with the original vehicle there's a 13 amp socket there there's a 12 volt socket and there are two USB ports. Lighting's rather nifty. Um, there's two switches. One is what they call mood lighting, and uh, and then there's the the full lighting. And in addition, there are little lights, reading lights, I suppose they are, uh, one above each head end of the bed. And uh, above me, you can probably just see the air conditioning unit, which was an extra we had put in. Uh, now this is particularly good because it provides not only air conditioning, it does dehumidification and it also does heating. And there's a good sized fridge, as you can see, and it's got a freezing compartment at the top. And I'm experimenting with the temperature at the moment. It's a little bit too cold, but I am reducing it. So that's the end of this first video in my series. I don't know how frequently I'll be making them. I'll do my best. Now what I have in mind is to concentrate on how to carry bicycles in the garage. Uh, I want to uh, show you some maintenance tips, things that you might uh, think about doing uh, before you close down for the winter. I'll also talk about things that you should do after each trip. I'll talk about the water system. I'll talk about the electricity. I'll talk about all sorts of other little bits and pieces and all of it will require a little bit of DIY skill on your part if you're going to follow some of the advice that I give. Anyway, that's it for now. The sun's shining, so perhaps it's time to go for a nice little trip. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.